About two years ago, I was in the car with my friend. As we approached a stoplight, she turned to me and said that she had something important to tell me. I looked at her, and she came out to me as bisexual. Immediately, I was elated. I let her know that I supported her and that I'd always be there for her, no matter what. However, I had this strange feeling. I didn't understand why she came out to me. I know, weird. I mean, I always knew what coming out was, but I never truly understood why people in our world had to come out in the first place. And it was at that point that I decided to understand, to understand why people in our society have to come out in its necessity. So my sort of thesis point, why is coming out necessary in our society, and why is it a thing? Well, it's important to recognize the fact that we have and still arguably live in a heteronormative society. Big word, I know. To put it simply, a heteronormative society is when people assume your sexuality as straight, and you're expected to be straight. Anything else is viewed as abnormal, incorrect, almost unjust, if you will. Part of the reason why this developed, without going into a whole history lesson here, is mainly because a lot of societies held the belief that homosexual behavior was the sort of unnatural thing. They viewed it, again, as immoral, unjust, and sometimes sinful, even. And so a prejudice grew around the community as a whole, and many people began to see the community in a negative light. This also stemmed, some people chose to actualize their hate in hate crimes, in heinous, horrific hate crimes throughout the centuries. In 1998, Matthew Shepard, a 21-year-old gay student attending the University of Wyoming, was beaten brutally by two men and left tied up in a field for 18 hours straight. He was rushed to a hospital, but died six days after his injuries. Lolly Winnens and Julianne Williams, in 1996, a lesbian couple hiking in Shenandoah National Park, were found murdered at their campsite. They, found, they were found gagged, with their throats slit and dead. These are the victims of a heteronormative society. They're people like anybody else. They had goals, aspirations, families. They were brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, and friends and family. Yet all because they love someone different, society said chose to hate them. So you can see how, for many people in the community, for much of human history, we're afraid to come out. We're afraid to embrace who they are and live true to themselves. And as a result, many chose to go into hiding. Yet others, however, chose to reject that. They chose to live true to themselves and be who they are, because they would rather live a life true to themselves than hiding behind a mask. And so coming out comes into play. You see, coming out as a whole places a way for many people in the community to achieve a level of acceptance that they couldn't gain from society. It allows them to achieve self-acceptance, self-love, and self-confidence from others around them and them themselves. And even today, we still see coming out playing a crucial role in our society today. So I answered my question, why coming out was so necessary in the past and arguably still is. But I still, at the time, didn't understand why coming out was so necessary, even today. When my friend came out to me, I thought that we move past a heteronormative society, and the toxic effects it brings with it, and the prejudice associated with it. With the legalization of gay marriage on a national level, and numerous states passing legislation to protect gay rights, and, increase, and the increased presence of the LGBTQ plus community in media and our daily life, I thought that we moved past that, and we achieved a level of acceptance we never did. Sadly, I was wrong. If you look on this map here, and the purple states, these are the only states that provide full legal protections for people in the community in terms of discrimination against, um, based on gender and sexual identity. The other states, as you see in light gray, blue, and white, either have little to none protections at all in place, meaning discrimination is legal. This, to me, is frightening. And what's more, in 2018, the FBI did a research study where they found that hate crimes have been increasing against the LGBTQ plus community. They found that 1,200 occurred in 2018, and most of those are just reported. Thousands go unreported every single year because so many people are fearful for being shunned by their community and being admonished. These are the facts. We still live in a heteronormative society to this day, and we still feel its effects. Millions of Americans live in states where they don't have protections, where they don't have the ability to speak out and be who they are. And as a result, it creates a toxic effect. In a way, it seems hopeless. It seems that our society can't achieve a true equal society. I myself was no exception. I thought that we'd never be able to advance and live in a world where prejudice was removed, where people could live as true, true to themselves. It seemed like utopia almost. 
But the thing is, it isn't utopia. It's actually a possibility. We're at a point where we can make a change, where we can make a world that's accepting of all people, regardless of sexual and gender identity. And it starts with all of us. So how do we do this? How do we end a heteronormative society? Is there a five-step guide to ending homophobia? Is there a book under your guys' seats that we can look at and understand how to end it? Well, sadly, no, for two reasons. One, I'm at Oprah, sadly. Probably the only thing under your chairs right now is dust. <laughs> but most importantly, the second thing is that there is no simple solution. The fact of the matter is that if we want to end a heteronormative society and the racism associated with all aspects of our lives, we have to end prejudice, which, as we know, is near impossible to do. However, I think there is something we can do. I think there's one thing that can combat a heteronormative society, and that's coming out. Think about it. The reason why the community has become so understood and widespread is through people coming out and embracing who they are. Think last year in 2019, Little Nas X, the singer and songwriter and rapper of the hit song Old Town Road. He came out as gay and serves as an inspiration now to millions of African American and, le and um, LGBTQ plus individuals as a way to show that they can reach level of self-acceptance and success, that they can be who they are and come out. As a society, we have to learn to accept them. Many people in our society face admonishment from others because of coming out. Many still face backlash, and it's time we change that. If we as a society can learn to accept others and encourage others to come out and embrace who they are, then I feel that we can be one step closer to ending a heteronormative society and achieving a level of equality that we haven't seen in the past. So today, I want to issue a call to action to all of you here. Look in, rather than, for too long, has society encouraged us to hide our differences for the sake of conformity and normality? I want to change that. To everyone here, I want you to look inside yourself and find the one thing that makes you different from everyone else in the world, from the 7.7 .7 billion people on this planet, because there's something that definitely sets you apart. I want you to find it, I want you to grab it, and I want you to embrace it, because that's the thing that makes you an individual. That's the thing that makes you who you are. And it's time we start embracing that. Show others the unique things that you can do, and the things that set you apart from others. Use that as a springboard and launch yourself to new heights. Move past the status quo and learn to be a, and learn and achieve a level of self-actualization that we couldn't have seen in the past. Who knows? You just might inspire someone else to do the same. Thank you.